Um, it might be kind of a silly question to ask of you this morning, but uh, how many of you are into uh, the sport of wrestling? I've seen some thumbs down. Now, I'm not talking about the, the Hulk Hogan or the <laughs> Nature Boy, the WWE type of wrestling here. What I'm talking about is the one-on-one, -on -one, the struggles, those times that it's just you and another person and they're struggling. I'm talking about real wrestling. Rest. That they understand. No, yeah, they understand it pretty well. Huh? I know it, it's not so popular down here, but I know in the north, and probably has to do with weather. Wrestling is it's probably about every school up there, and like any more any sports there are, there seems to be leagues. Uh, when I went to ministers' conference in Wisconsin, the end of April, we uh, had a, a big room, that large room, like this, about the size of this, maybe bigger, that uh, we couldn't use the last day because there was a whole bunch of wrestling mats set up in there and they were having a wrestling tur club tournament uh, in there. But anyways, wrestling. I don't know if you've ever Googled, Googled wrestling or not, but uh, I was surprised at the, the number of competitive events that are connected with that word wrestling somewhere w within them. And some of the wrestling isn't exactly what we would define as sports. I guess. Well, I, I'm sure that you have participated in arm wrestling sometime or other in, in your life. At least you guys have. Maybe you women haven't, but you might have. But you've probably done the thumb wrestling thing, right? And oh yeah, remember when you'd have a sleepover or whatever? What did you and your, your buddies, your, your friends or whatever do? Remember the Indian leg wrestling? There you go, guys. There you try that out. Now, they've learned something from the message already today, how to entertain themselves. Indian leg wrestling. Well, there are some wrestling events that have the wrestling word connected to them that are a little bit lesser, lesser known. One of those is toe wrestling. Two people with bare feet, they interlock their big toes, and the idea of it is that they have to pin the other one over. Now, this was started by a group of, uh, of Brits uh, from Staffordshire, England, and it's reported that they created this competition because they wanted an event where Brits could reign supreme. So I don't know if that means that people from Britain have stronger, bigger, big toes or, or exactly what. But then Lancashire, England, they got involved in this. And they have an event every August of the year. And it is called the World Grav Gravy Wrestling Championship. Men and, men and women, too. They wrestle in a, a makeshift pool that, that is filled with brown gravy. Doesn't sound real pleasant, does it? Sounds like maybe there's a fire hose at the end of it or something like that that's going to be taking place. But in case we're thinking that the Brits have the corner on the market on these strange wrestling events, Barnesville, Minnesota. Now, do you think that's a farming community, Barnesville? Barnesville, Minnesota. 
they are the home of the mashed potato wrestling championships. They have it every year at the conclusion of their Potato Days festival that they have. Here again, a, a makeshift pool is set up and it is filled with potato flakes and water, making mashed potatoes. And then the competitors wrestle in this. It doesn't look very pleasant to me, but you will notice, I don't know if you can tell it or not, but look at the smiles on their faces as it's, I don't know, maybe it feels good to be in mashed potatoes. It seems like a waste of mashed potatoes to me, even if they are flake mashed potatoes. But the event doesn't go to total waste because at the end of the day, some of the local farmers bring in some of their cattle and they eat the, what the mashed potatoes that are left in the, in the pool. So it's not a, a total waste. Wrestling. No matter whether it's arms, thumbs, legs, in gravy, in mashed potatoes, they all have a common goal. And it is hold on. Hold on until your opponent simply wears out or gives in. But honestly, I'm not going to be talking about these kinds of wrestling today. These types of wrestling are entertainment. They're just fun to watch maybe, maybe fun to participate in. But there are a lot more seriousness to wrestling. Wrestling that we go through. We wrestle with decisions that we face. We wrestle with relationships that we have with career choices. We wrestle with our finances, at least way some of us do. And we wrestle with habits that we have, or maybe habits that we're wanting to develop. We wrestle with our own thought patterns. We wrestle with the pattern, thought patterns of our kids. <laughs> And we wrestle with temptation and sin. Remember what we said the goal of wrestling was? Hold on until your opponent simply wears out or gives in. Isn't that a good description of our wrestling matches that we have? And if we come out on the wrong end of that wrestling match, then we wrestle with guilt. No wonder we're so tired and cranky all the time. But the bottom line is that in all of these personal wrestling matches that we have in life, it all comes down to we find ourselves wrestling with God. Wrestling with our relationship with God. What that comes down to is our wills versus his wills. So today we're going to be looking at the scriptures recording of Jacob and his wrestling match with God's angel that we find in Genesis 32. Now you remember that Jacob, you will remember that Jacob is, well, we could say that he was a, a wrestler from birth. You remember he had a twin brother, Esau. Esau was the firstborn. That meant that he had the, the legal right to the birthright of the family and also to receive his father's blessing. But Jacob, you remember, he was holding on to Esau's heel when they were born, it was just kind of like he was trying to pull him back so he could get out first and receive that birthright and blessing that was so important to him. Because of that, he was named Jacob. That name means supplanter. What is a supplanter? 
it's uh, kind of like the guy who cuts in line in front of you and pushes you back a spot. The kind of guy who always is looking for an advantage over other people. Jacob was determined to be in control of his own fate. Even if it meant ripping the family apart. Even if it meant robbing his brother of his future. Jacob's greatest desire, his will, was to claim the honors of the firstborn son. So what did he do? Remember, he bribed Esau with a bowl of stew for that birthright, and then he tricked his father Isaac into giving him the blessing that was supposed to be given to Esau. And understandably, Esau was not a happy camper about this, and the family was torn apart. The two brothers lived apart from each other for a number of years until the day when Jacob the wrestler decided it was to come to be time to become Jacob the reconciler. Jacob sent a word to his brother that he wanted to meet with him. That messenger came back and and said that Esau would meet with him. He was on his way, but he was coming with 400 men. As you start to read the, this event in Genesis 32, in verse 7, it says that he was, great, he was filled with great fear and distress. Can you see what's happening there? He's wrestling with his own sins of the past, his guilt. And he's also wrestling with the future. Wrestling with himself, just like we do from time to time. So what does Jacob do? He humbles himself and he prays to God. He sends his family and his servants and his livestock ahead of him to meet Esau. And Jacob, all alone now, ends up engaging in a wrestling match with an angel of God. So Genesis 32, we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 31. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Gabbet. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. If you read further in the scriptures, Hosea kind of goes back to this event, and Hosea describes this man as an angel, uh, a divine divine presence of God in this man. Verse 25, when the man saw that he could not overpower him, overpower Jacob, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. Verse 30, so Jacob called the place Peniel, 
saying, it was because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Penel, and he was limping because of his hip. So, what is it that we can learn? We can learn from Jacob to help us with, with maybe our wrestling matches with maybe our guilty feelings. Times when we wrestle with God. And I think the first thing we can pull out of this it is when we are, are wrestling that we confront what it means to trust God. Trust God with our life. You remember Jacob's ambition was, it was self-centered desires. They were rooted in fear and they needed to control, he needed to control his own future. Until this humble prayer at a place called Penel, which means facing God, by the way, Jacob had never really trusted, trusted God to guide him and to provide for him. That would all change after this wrestling match with God. We're going to be looking throughout the rest of this message at a a story I read about Pastor Aaron Duvall. We'll come back to it a couple of times. He is now the pastor of Cross Point Community Church in Idaho Falls. But he shares his experience of attending a worship service with his wife, Sharia, three days after she had been diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. They were visiting Duvall's home church in Ohio for the, congress, for the purpose of the congregation being able to pray over Sharia and for the pastor to anoint her. Duvall was struggling with fear, even with anger, as he got ready for church that morning. And on top of all that was going on, his hip was hurting from sleeping on an unfamiliar bed the night before. We know what that feels like. But he, this is what he writes. I didn't want to go to church. I was empty. I was angry. And my hip hurt. As we walked out, Sharia looked at me and she whispered, God is good. God is God. And God is good at being God. Let me ask, do you believe God is good? How did you come to that conclusion? Wasn't it after your wrestling with whether God is good or not? Some event in your life that you struggled with? Wasn't it during that struggle that you learned what it means to trust God, to trust him with your life? I think the second lesson that we can learn here from the story of Jacob, it also teaches us that there are blessings we can only gain through our times of wrestling with God. That's not an, a lesson anyone else can teach us. Or even go through for us. We have to go through that wrestling experience ourselves. Only then did we learn that God is actually with us. God does not leave us alone in our fear, in our distress. 
or even our doubt or our struggles. In our wrestling, we confront our own weaknesses in the matchless strength of God. And we discover that God has a plan for our lives that far exceeds our own will, our own goals and desires. In Jacob's wrestling match, the angel wounds Jacob's thigh, his hip. Yet Jacob refuses to let go, and he demands a blessing from the angel. And you remember the angel's reply to him? Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Professor Amy Gabriel, she writes about this event. It true, in, to truly encounter God, Jacob must accept his own mortality in reliance upon grace. He must receive the blessing as a blessing, a gift from God. Thus, at the heart of Jacob's wrestling is an encounter with God as Savior and a God who does not wound cannot save. A God who does not wound cannot save. Now that's not a, a lesson any one of us really want to learn, is it? But we only have to look at the cross of Jesus Christ to know that it's absolutely true. A God who does not wound cannot save. Why? Because he is a just God. Let's return to our story here of, of uh, Reverend uh, Duvall and his wife Sharia who is wrestling with uh, the recent cancer diagnosis. And he writes, we were called down there at the church now. We are we were called down to be anointed and walked down to the aisle, uh, to the altar, like prize fighters approaching the ring. Maybe now I would get my answers. If not, I would at least get my showdown. And I knelt. And I broke. The sadness, the anger, the disappointment that flowed out eventually turned to questioning and then to begging. If we were having a fight, he says, I was losing. At that moment, I got a deep sense that God was communicating to me. Perhaps an echo of what Sharia had whispered to me earlier that day. I am good. I am God. I am good at being God. And I don't sleep. The only way we can ever comprehend God's awesome goodness and his power, God's all-sufficient grace and his strength is when God is all we have left. When everything else we rely on, that we put our confidence in, everything else that was under our own power suddenly is ripped out of our hands. When God is all that is left, that's when we discover that God is always more than enough to sustain us. And then finally, it was when we meet God in our weakness and God prevails that we gain God's strength. That is when God can use us. 
can work through us to accomplish his will. Dr. Warren Gage is one of the Legionnaire ministers. That if you're ever on Right Now Media and you go to conference meetings, you will see a number of videos there from that group. But he writes, It is instructive that once Jacob became weak in his flesh, he became strong in the spirit. It is instructive that once Jacob became weak in the flesh, he became strong in the spirit. It was through his wounding that he became Israel. By the way, Israel, that Hebrew uh, name, means God prevails. When we stop wrestling with God and confront our own weakness, that is when God works through us. Works through us with his strength and his power to accomplish his will. Even though Jacob technically lost that divine wrestling match, he gained a new relationship with God and God's blessing on his life. Now Israel and all of his descendants became a people who lived by the vision and the promises of God that have been passed down even to us today. And that brings us back to Reverend Duvall and his wrestling match with a good God. Reverend Duvall says that after the, the prayer, when they went forward in the anointing time, he limped back to his pew. He was still hesitant to trust the, the voice of God that he heard that spoke to him at the altar. But then the pastor ended the, ended the message that day with reading from Genesis 32. The story of Jacob wrestling with the angel. And this is what he writes about that. And suddenly my whole world shifted. I am God. I am good. I am good at being God. I do not sleep, and I always have been right here. It was not in the silence that I was finding God, but in the fighting, in the lamenting, in the pain. If God is in the redeeming business, if God is trying to use all things to redeem, it makes sense that he would use even our pain, even our anger, to draw us in to his kingdom. After the service, as I walked up the stairs of my parents' house, my hip gave out on the second step, and I limped. And this is what he continues with. This time, however, I didn't respond in anger. I responded in thankfulness. It was a reminder that although I had been silent, God had not. Although I hadn't felt him, he was there. The distance I sensed certainly wasn't on my part. And it took a wrestling match for me to draw close. That may have been the only thing that would. And he continues, I don't know how long I'll have this limp and pain. For now, it's a reminder. A holy pain that testifies that sometimes God lets us limp. And that in the wrestling, we aren't alone. Now, I don't know if you're experiencing right now your own penel. 
facing God moment. The time when maybe you're wrestling with God, maybe it's, maybe you're wrestling of, about giving up control in some area of your life. Maybe you're wrestling with the, the question of God's goodness. Maybe questioning whether God loves you or not. Whether he actually has plans for your life. Whatever it might be. I hope that you will hang on in that wrestling. I hope that you'll keep your eyes and your ears open for God's presence. For God's blessing in that struggle. I hope you trust that when you meet God in your weakness, God will provide more than enough strength to sustain you. And that you will discover, is my prayer as you're wrestling, that you aren't alone. That you've never been alone. Remember, God is good. God is God. And he is good at being God. And he does not sleep. And he's always been right there. Maybe that's what you needed to be reminded of this morning. Because life gets tough sometimes. And we get in these wrestling matches. But I pray that you would remember this phrase as you're doing that wrestling. I am God. I I am good. I am God. Not me, God. I'm good at being God. I do not sleep. And I've always, don't miss that word, I've always been right there. Father, we thank you for this reminder that so many times we get caught up in the world and events and things that are going on in our personal lives that we forget that you are God, that you're good at being God, that you always are right here, that you are our strength, you are our encourager, you are our sustainer, no matter what the events are that are going on in our life. Father, help us to open to you. Open ourselves honestly and truthfully to you. And receive your blessing. Your words of encouragement your strength as we live this life here on earth being a part of your kingdom I ask it in Jesus name Amen you can turn in your hymnals to number two